Andrew Marchant says that ESPN and the Pac-12 are hundreds of millions of dollars apart on their, uh, I guess, negotiations for the Pac-12 media rights. And I, I got to tell you, I'm not totally shocked by this, but basically what that means is the Pac-12 thinks that they are worth significantly more than what ESPN is willing to give them. Uh, the fact that Fox is not in on this at all is a little surprising. Uh, it could mean any number of things. By hundreds of millions, that doesn't necessarily mean hundreds of millions in one single season. That means over a long period of time, right? Over five years or seven years or whatever it is. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take a listen to what he says on the Marshand and Orand show. Uh, he and John Orand uh, are the media gurus. They know everything that there is to know about this stuff. Take a listen to this. I think the Pac-12 and ESPN, hundreds of millions of dollars apart. They are not even close. So that is going to be interesting uh, where that goes uh, in terms of negotiations and will teams jump. Because when you're that far apart, that means something has to happen. And I'm not saying it's going to happen. I don't have information on this. But something just maybe a little conjecture. Do one of the digital players get involved with uh, the Pac-12? right? Apple, for example, loves to buy everything and then sell subscriptions. And they did that with the MLS. The Pac-12 just had this problem of not being, you know, with the Pac-12 network and you couldn't find it. And it's, you know, obviously not as successful as the ones that partnered with uh, Fox or ESPN, but money talks. And if Apple can make the case that we're going to pay you, we're going to bundle uh, the Pac-12 and they can get the money that they're looking for, uh, maybe that maybe they come into the picture. But right now, the issue for the Pac-12 and perhaps the Big 12 as well is just leverage, right? The, they've already spent a lot of money. So I think they're way, that doesn't, make, that doesn't mean a deal won't happen, but they're going to somehow have to strengthen their hand if you're um, both, especially the Pac-12, I think. The Big 12 has already expanded a little bit, uh, and I think they could try to pick off some Pac-12 teams. So that is something to watch uh, for our college football fans out there. Yeah, I would be absolutely. Uh, I, I want to upgrade shocked, gobsmacked. Is that more than shocked? I it, it would. I would be gobsmacked if ESPN doesn't uh, find out a, a way to do a deal with with, with the Pac-12. I will. I will tell you this: there is no way that ESPN does not get a part of the Pac-12. That late night window for them is so massively important. They are going to have to have it. Now, here's the big deal. I brought up on the show on Tuesday, Baylor and BYU did just a huge number. They're the highest for that late-night window in five years, since 2016, I guess six years. Uh, it's been a long time since they have had that many people. I think it was 2.3 million people, 2.4 million people watching in that 10.30 p.m. Eastern time slot. And here's the problem. Those two teams don't want to do that all the time. Right, they are. It's it's mountain time for BYU, so you're talking about a 9:30 p.m. kick for them. That is, or excuse me, an 8:30 p.m. kick for them. It's late. Like you don't want to do it every single weekend. So, in order for the Big 12 to take up that late night window, they would have to take some of these Pac-12 schools. So what happens here? Right, that's the question. The question here is: Does ESPN partner with one of these digital? Uh, digital uh, d uh, streaming networks. I'm going to get my words right eventually, I swear to you. But Amazon and Apple both were very interested in Big Ten rights. Do they want to dive in on these Pac-12 rights and get maybe, and this is a, we'll, we'll see, This is maybe they get the more tech-savvy college football fans that are, of course, on the West Coast. That seems to be, and, and everybody thought that this was where this was headed years and years and years ago once these big-time digital media companies started getting into it. Everybody thought, eh, maybe Netflix dives into it. Maybe so-and-so and so-and-so. But Amazon and Apple appear to be the ones that uh, would bolster their subscription services the most by having these types of games on. So if you can find a way to get some Oregon games, to get some Stanford games, to get some Cal games, etc. Maybe this will work, 
right? Maybe Amazon comes in as uh, taking over the Pac-12 network or Apple or whoever, right? Uh, but they take over the Pac-12 network. That way we have games where you can actually find them nationally as opposed to not being able to get the Pac-12 network because there's no way for a fan on the East Coast to really be able to get the Pac-12 network without going with one of these other streaming companies uh, that would be Hulu or whoever whoever it is that carries the Pac-12. Maybe Fubo. I don't even remember who uh, who carries the Pac-12 network. But this is the situation. Does ESPN just toss up the money? Or do they partner with one of these digital footprints? And I think that one of these digital companies is going to get some of this. I mean, we talked on Tuesday about the fact that George Klyovkov is incredibly excited at the idea of moving towards digital. He is focused on that. He wants to deal with Amazon, and now, of course, these guys bring in Apple. Somebody is going to get a part of that Pac-12 contract. They are going to make it worth their time and worth the effort to be able to put this on streaming as opposed to over linear television, and it's going to be interesting. Very, very interesting Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.